What is going on everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Yan. I do hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a match review of Chelsea's 4-0 shellacking loss. And I do mean shellacking <laughs> to Manchester United away at Old Trafford. Before I break down what happened in this match today, please do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notifications icon. And if you want to help me out, please like the video. Frank Lampard versus Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, his first competitive game as Chelsea coach, his first Premier League game. Obviously a very difficult game. Um, you know what, let's get into it. Let's bring up the formation screen. So I've thrown up the graphic next to me of how the teams lined up. Chelsea played a 4-2-3-1 with Kepa, Riza, Balaga and Cole Emerson at left back. As for Laqueta at right back, the centre back pairing of Zuma and Christensen, shot Cora Luiz is gone. The double pivot consisted of Jorginho and Kovacic. Um, Barkley played in the number 10. Mason Mount surprisingly played out on the left. Well, he's played there before, but people did expect Christian Pulisic. Pedro on the right, and another sort of semi-surprise, Tammy Abraham instead of the more experienced Giroud. Now, I'm not going to run through the Manchester United lineup as you can see it next to me. Now, it wasn't actually always a 4-2-3-1, interestingly. Uh, it often became a 4-3-3 with um, Pereira dropping into midfield. So, arguably Manchester United's strongest lineup, maybe, maybe Dan James as well, depending on the game. Uh, possibly not Chelsea's strongest lineup, certainly you'd think Pulisic and Kante would start in Chelsea's strongest lineup, but Frank probably had a plan, maybe. Now, I'm going to get into a sort of timeline of how things happened, but I do want to say, and I do want to preface this with, in open play, Chelsea were the better team in the first half. Now, you'll see that later with statistics and stuff and me talking about how the game went, but... Let me just get into it and you'll see why in a bit. So Chelsea put on loads of early pressure and in the fourth minute they've got Manchester United camped into their own defensive third. A few combinations and Tammy Abraham, who has been pretty high octane in early doors, hits the post and is inches away from converting a goal that David De Gea would have no chance of saving. Seventh minute Manchester United go down the other end, Martial has a good opportunity but can only execute a tame effort which Kepa just sort of picks up. So in the earlier stages Chelsea were very very good but they're down the left hand side as I said before my preview is very very difficult because Aaron Wan-Bissaka is an absolute beast as a defensive right back as I said before statistically the best defensive right back in Europe last season uh, this is probably why Christian Pulisic didn't start actually because it would have been the ultimate baptism of fire away at Old Trafford and coming up against Wan-Bissaka certainly you know, fresh legs maybe a bit later, but starting him it would have been proper deep end stuff. So within the first 10 minutes, that's when I sort of noticed that Manchester United's formation was changing in and out of possession. Chelsea's didn't, it was a 4-2-3-1 with the wingers tracking back when they had to, and you know, Tammy pressing by himself, or maybe the wingers joining in when they could. So in about the 10th minute, Chelsea are looking excellent. They're all over Manchester United, they're doing great combinations on the ground, and when the ground passing channels aren't there, they're quite comfortably lobbing the ball over the top for, you know, teammates to receive the ball quite comfortably. And then come off the 12th minute, Mason Mount forces a decent save from David De Gea. From quite far out too. So the game goes up and down, up and down for a little bit until the 17th minute where Kurt Zuma decides to make an absolutely unnecessary clumsy challenge in the box and concedes his first career penalty in the Premier League. Not the best time to do it, Zuma. Marcus Rashford steps up confidently and bangs the penalty and converts it comfortably. Top left corner. It was a really good penalty. Nothing can, Kepa can do about it. So it's 1-0 to Manchester United and this is against the run of play if you look how Chelsea were performing in open play and where the game was played in Manchester United's defensive third. But, you know, these things happen and it was a stonewall penalty conceded by Kurt Zuma. 22nd minute, Christensen goes down after a 50-50 with Pogba receiving an elbow in the head. No intention from Pogba and there's no foul, they're both basically having an aerial duel. But this is a concern for Andreas Christensen because of he is great positionally a lot of the time and defensively in many ways, but his physicality has always been a concern for me as a Chelsea fan. 
So, although Chelsea have had the better of it up to about the 17th minute, Manchester United start to come alive. They're finally finding the right passes to each other and they're not panicking in possession. They'll receive the ball in turn. I saw it a lot of times with Jesse Lingard where he got the ball between his feet and rather than panicking and conceding possession, he turns and lays off the ball because he knows his teammate will be running into that space. So up to the 30th minute now, Chelsea are losing it a little bit in midfield and this is where I was starting to think the 4-2-3-1 was not the right approach for this game. Chelsea should be dominating midfield with the players they have and they are not. Pedro is showing industry running up and down but he's broken down a few attacks at this point um, and you know what he's a bit too more sort of frantic and although he's not slow on the ball he is ending decent offensive passages of play. Shortly after in the 31st minute McTominay scuffs a kick and totally lays off the possession to Chelsea players. Chelsea advance forward and the ball comes to Mason Mount who can either take a shot on goal or square it to Tammy Abraham for probably a certain really big chance to score and scuffs his pass and the whole attack breaks down which was a hugely important and frustrating moment because Chelsea were in for what seems like an almost certain goal. So the game goes up and down really. Chelsea do a load of decent attacks and Man United break. But when Chelsea do these good attacking combinations, Maguire was very good in this game. But for me, Aaron Wan-Bissaka, when he was coming in narrow to make defensive actions as well, he was absolutely superb. And <laughs> it became more and more obvious why Lampard didn't throw Pulisic in early doors. 35th minute, they do a VAR check, which is incredibly exciting, not. Uh, for the most obvious offside you will ever see from Marcus Rashford. But, you know, they're showcasing VAR, so... And a minute later, Pedro forces a save from David De Gea. Chelsea are knocking on the door. 39th minute comes and Chelsea are enjoying an excellent flurry of chances in the Man United penalty area. They're doing loads of good combinations. Finally, it falls to Barkley. He forces a really good save from David De Gea. Uh, Jorginho runs onto the rebound and... So, you know, fires in a decent enough shot, but it's blocked by a defender. The frustration continues for Chelsea. And even more so, one minute later in the 40th minute, because Emerson hits the crossbar after an excellent passage of Chelsea play. And yeah, like I said, the frustration continues. So at this point, Chelsea have rattled the woodwork twice and they can feel rather frustrated with how the game has gone. Around the 44th minute, Barkley's actually doing some good passages of play. He hasn't been perfect this half and conceded possession a few times, but he's doing really good in moments. And this is one of those moments where he's trying to force the issue, but sadly his teammates aren't on the same wavelength as him. And once again, offensive passages of play break down. The final stages of this half does consist of Chelsea applying loads of pressure on Manchester United. Can't find a way through though and it ends at halftime 1-0 Manchester United. So I'm going to throw up the halftime statistics graphic next to me now. So as you can see in this first half away at Old Trafford, Chelsea had the lion's share of possession, shots, <laughs> shots on target, passes and they had a better pass accuracy. Not to mention they did rattle the woodwork twice. It really was a bad, bad time for Kurt Zuma to decide he wants to see what it's like to concede a penalty in the Premier League because you could argue if that doesn't happen the complexion of the game might be quite different at this point. Notable performances in the first half. Tammy Abraham was very good, good application, you could tell he was chomping at the bit to get in there. Um, obviously hit the post early doors and pressed well but I feel like he should have done or he could have done with a strike partner in this game. and. I feel a lot of the formation and tactical approach was a bit poor. Ross Barkley, I feel, was good in the number 10. He wasn't perfect, and yes, he did concede possession a couple of times, but he did force the issue, and he is constantly thinking of ways to basically create chances and goals, and he, he was doing that today, so I want to give him a little shout out. Emerson did really well down the left flank. He was quite good defensively, had a good couple of defensive actions in there, but advanced down the left flank well, and was wise not to get too close to Aaron Wambasaka and did sort of appropriate smart play. Kovacic and Jorginho were both good in the double pivot for me in terms of how well they could have played. Kovacic carried the ball okay and Jorginho did make a couple of good uh, defensive actions even if he did misplace one or two passes. So uh, Jorginho throughout this game actually had a couple of moments where he prevented goals as well. But for me, 
it wasn't right to have a double pivot against the system. I feel when Frank saw what was going on that he should have changed it, but still, they played okay. Underwhelming players for me in this half, one was Pedro. I felt like he was running all over the gaff, which is great. It's good to see industry and application, but he broke down good offensive passages of play, good basically attacks where Chelsea could have essentially capitalized and score a goal. And he was just, you know, lingering on the ball for too long. Sadly, also, I want to say Mason Mount because he is a great player and you can see such bright moments from him. But I feel like although he was occupying the right space most of the time and making the right runs most of the time, stuff that gets drilled into your head, I feel like the occasion may have got to him and a couple of his passes and touches let him down. So that was the end of the first half. Let's get into the second half. I'm just going to switch the graphic to the 11 that Chelsea ended the match with. So, no changes at the break from Frank Lampard, and Chelsea come out the blocks pretty good and immediately force a corner from United, but cannot convert. The opening five minutes really is a bit scrappy and it's up and down from both teams and just sort of consisting of niggly fouls and nothing really too well executed. Five minutes later, Manchester United are starting to enjoy a really good spell of pressure, but Chelsea will not let them in at this point. In the 56th minute out the other end though, Emerson rifles a decent shot at David De Gea that forces a really good save. Um, he really fancies a goal in this game, he's already hit the woodwork in the first half and you can tell he's got his eyes set on goal. So in the 58th minute, Ross Barkley comes on for Christian Pulisic who is about to endure a very difficult Premier League debut. This means he's going to play on the left wing and Mount moves into the number 10. Personally, I would have had taken Mount off and left Ross Barkley in the number 10 because I think he could have combined better with Pulisic, but I'm not Chelsea coach. <laughs> 65th minute, another Manchester United goal. United are breaking down towards Chelsea's goal and Rashford is in possession. It looks like he overcooked, well he does overcook a pass to Lingard, but he does Lingard does well to hold on to possession. He keeps it alive and he squares it into the advancing Anthony Martial who taps it in, 2-0. I think it's about 90 seconds later, Manchester United score again. Chelsea obviously all over the gaff, all at sea. Caught sleeping, Manchester United, they play a ball forward, a great long ball from Pogba to Marcus Rashford. He splits the defenders beautifully. It's a great run to be fair, um, perfectly timed run. Gets in, one on one at Kepa, just slots it past him. Another goal, Manchester United. Even though Chelsea did look very, very promising in the first half for long periods, this short spell of, uh, you know, Manchester United dominance on the break and they conceded two goals in, you know, 90 seconds or whatever. It doesn't look like now in the second half, Chelsea don't look like the same team. I believe personally, if Chelsea were set up differently and they had the same application from the first half, they could have done a lot better in this game. But at this point, they don't look like they're going to do anything positive. 70th minute, Emerson forces yet another save from David De Gea. Like I said, he's had an eye for it this game. But Chelsea's recent passages of play was once again slowed down by Pedro, which was frustrating to watch, really. And yes, I'm going to say, at this point, it was really obvious and notable that this type of game, maybe this type of team setup, seemed way too fast for Cesar Azpilicueta. He was certainly a big weak point in Chelsea for Chelsea in this game, more so in the second half, and it was becoming more and more evident, sadly, for Dave. The game goes up and down for a bit until the 81st minute. Now, it does actually look like Tammy Abraham uh, got fouled in the Manchester United box. I'll have to see it back, but from the replays of the game, it looks like he takes an elbow, but there's no VAR review, so, I mean, they'll look at it. So maybe it was a mistake or coming together or something. But Tammy goes down, they break up the other side of the pitch. Paul Bogba carries the ball right down the middle, lays it off for Daniel James, who hasn't been on the pitch for that long, and scores his first competitive goal for Manchester United. 4-0, Manchester United now. In the 85th minute, Chelsea are up the other end, and Mason Mount forces a save from David De Gea, but these are turning into sort of pop shots now when you know there's no chance of rescuing anything from the game. In the 90th minute, Kante, who again hasn't been on the pitch too long either, concedes a foul to Daniel James in the sort of near the right back position. Manchester United take the free kick and there's a passage of play that's really actually quite poor for Manchester United. It's all a bit of a comedy of errors in Chelsea's defensive third, but you know what? I think at this point, United didn't care. 
94th minute in stoppage time, Emerson forces yet another save from David De Gea. Yeah, I told you he really fancied a goal in this game. And to be fair, this was a really decent strike from long range, but De Gea was equal to it. So, full time Manchester United 4, Chelsea 0. I'm going to throw up the full time statistic graphic on the screen now. So, once again, as you can see, Chelsea had the lion's share of all the statistics essentially and basically conceded less fouls as well. So, that looks great on paper, right? But not the scoreline. The stats really didn't tell the story of this game. Sure, Chelsea can have good passes, more possession, more completed passes, more shots on goal. But if the game plan isn't right, which it wasn't in this game, you will suffer. Frank Lampard can feel frustrated with this game because like I said, in open play, Chelsea were probably the better team in the first half and had Zuma not conceded such a clumsy penalty and Chelsea go in at nil-nil or convert one of their chances up the other end from when they hit the post, obviously the complexion of the game is different and then the narrative of the game you know, might be different in the long term. But the fact is, Solskjaer did set out Manchester United very well. They were happy to play without the ball when they didn't have it. They were happy to not necessarily press. There was no obligation to press in their own defensive third. And with players like Aaron Wan-Bissaka and Harry Maguire now in their ranks, they can do old school defending and tackles. So if Chelsea were better versed in the 4-2-3-1 and had more settled personnel, or certainly Frank Lampard's 4-2-3-1 in terms of tactical instruction, they may have done better here. But the fact is, they're all new to it. So for me, maybe a 4-4-2 diamond, which they did play a lot in pre-season, might have suited them better. And I say that because Manchester United weren't playing down the flanks. Yes, you can make the argument if Chelsea were playing a different formation, they would play down the flanks, but they weren't, they are playing down the middle and Chelsea were really, really poor in transition in this game. A diamond midfield would have sort of offered an extra blanket of security and maybe could have dominated more and the two strikers ahead of the diamond probably could have been more effective in their pressing. So, a slap round the face for Chelsea, a slap round the face for Frank Lampard and maybe revenge for Manchester United from the 4-0 shellacking from Antonio Conte. Obviously it's a bit different in terms of narrative and you know, you've got to give Frank Lampard a little bit of breathing room in terms of learning. This is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's settled team now, he's had time with the team, he's at home and he's got some big budget transfers and he had the, but you know, kudos to Solskjaer because he had the right game plan here. Even if they had the rub of the green in the first half, Manchester United deserve this win and they deserve the big scoreline and it's an important lesson for Chelsea and Frank Lampard. So what do you guys think? How do you think the game went? Who do you think performed well? If any, who do you think was a big problem as Piliqueta? Anyway, get down in the comments, let me know your thoughts, and you know what? Please like the video if you've enjoyed my analysis and breakdown of the game. Remember, you can support this channel and gain access to exclusive content by becoming a patron of my Patreon. The link is in the description. Also, if you'd like, you can follow me on social media at FootballYannick on Twitter and Instagram, that's at FootballYannick. And other than that, guys, it's going to be Liverpool for Chelsea next, so that will be an interesting match. But anyway, try to enjoy the football, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick, got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.